Triple M's Dead Set Legends are serious about sport. Makita are serious about outdoor tools. For all the outdoors with Makita. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to your Dead Set Legends on this uh, lovely, lovely Saturday. It's prelim finals. There's grand finals all around our beautiful state. And uh, we'll go through every game of football that we saw over the last 24 hours. And one man that's just stayed fat with this show... And he's sticking around because I love this young man, Bradley Ebert joins us. And good morning to you, Bradley. Hey, good morning, Jars. It's great to be here. Unfortunately, Bluey's just having No, he's wa- gone. Yeah, he's had enough. Yep. He, uh, he's sipping those lattes. and, and Lattes, is he? I'd say so. Right, you are. So down in KI. Welcome to you, Haydo. Thank back. you very much. I do miss the smell of coconut oil when Bluey's <laughs> Yes. <so I'm laughs> yes, and the lavender oil. And the lavender oil. And, and, I like the ears. <laughs> and I like how the light just shines off that forehead it very does, nicely as well, doesn't it? All right, yeah. mate. Who's on the uh, show, Bradley? Let's uh, go. Mate, we have a big show go coming up. Jake Kelly. Uh, Jake Kelly, the former Crow now, former Crow. So he's coming on to chat with us. Tom Rockcliffe coming to, uh, I guess, chat about all things Port Adelaide and the excitement that's building there. We've got Rusty for uh, Rusty's V8 spot. Uh, we've got Jay Clark coming on to have a chat. You've also you're also talking to your old former mentor J- uh, Grant Cameron, yeah. who uh, used to host the SFM show with you back in the nineties. No, and... Triple M show. Oh, I never Triple did M an show. SFM. Sorry, Reflecting mate. on nine eleven, which but... is the twentieth year anniversary today. It is, mate. So uh, it's fantastic for him to come on mm. and have a chat to you. Right, and, and I'm going to let you, you know, take that Thank one you, because it's uh, mm-hmm. it's a very powerful sort of segment. But uh, we're also dissecting everything that happened last Beautiful. night, and we're also reviewing a uh, previewing. Tonight's big, okay. massive game, Jars. Well so let's get excited, hey? Cage, you ready to go? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's John Bovey and uh, it's John. Uh, 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 no, now let's talk about last night, and we'll talk about tonight's game as well, young man. And Triple M will be rocking football mm. nonstop. I, uh, I could not believe what I witnessed last night. The Geelong Football Club, too old, too slow, and that criticism has been lingering for a number of years. And you've got to respect what they've done over a long period of time. I get all that. Mm. But that Melbourne football side last night, oh, my God. That was Hollywood-style football at its best. It Maxi Gorn. Yeah. Maxi Gorn was on fire. What about um, Salem? I just felt like his run off the half-back line. Petrucca was unbelievable. Did you see this that coming? Was... Did you see it coming or not? Y- yeah. So this you year, did. Well, no, I didn't see the 90-point smashing. 93-point smashing. Yeah, yeah. That's, I, I didn't see that coming. Yeah. But at the same time, Melbourne have been building nicely. And I just feel like, I remember a couple of weeks ago, I reckon we talked about it, when they finished on the top of the ladder. Yeah. And you had Petrucca in tears after the game, after yeah, they beat right. yep. Geelong, yep. down in Geelong. Um, you could just feel there was something building there. And, yeah. and I know that they've obviously been playing fantastic footy all season long, but to actually see it with that passion and with that enthusiasm, it was something that you sort of go, all right, there, there's obviously something going on at that football club, similar to probably what's going on at Port Adelaide as well. Um, and they seriously took it to some kind of level last night. Mm. Ge- Geelong got smashed a couple of weeks ago by Port mm. Adelaide, and we talked about was the dynasty over for Geelong? Do they need a rebuild? Rah, rah, rah. Then they just got absolutely demolished last night, and now we seriously their, have their to whole, discuss it. Their whole football program is shot to pieces after last night's building. Yeah, would that be fair? Mate, the Geelong bit... Football Club program now has to be... What, what, what was it? They've played in 10 right of the last 13 prelim finals or something. Mm. So, and so and so you've to got to say commend that, them on that. And that's it. The, the way that they pr- continue to just be consistently Unders- producing... Yep. You need to respect but that. You but at get the same time, you've also got to yeah. win, don't you? Correct. Yeah. And so when they're getting there and not producing, mm. and then they keep topping up with these players yeah. that are over 30 or at least at 30, questions have got to be asked, certainly. Certainly. And I think that they will now start to go, all right, where to next? Yeah. And there'll be some changes, yeah. and it needs to happen because you see a team like Melbourne, mm. you see a team like Richmond five or six years ago pretty much hit rock bottom mm. and then climb their way out of it mm. with a rejuvenated list and with a change of well, personnel, coaches, all that sort of yep. stuff. And, and I guess Geelong are now got to go, all right, do we just keep going at this level mm-hmm. and keep getting this criticism knowing that we're going to reach the top and, and we will eventually, mm. but at what cost? Because I guess even if they do win it next year, then they're going to lose all these big-name players. Yeah. How do they keep topping yeah. it up? Giles, question for you. Yes. If last night wasn't an absolute thumping yes, on behalf of Melbourne, yeah. say if it was only a goal or two, would we be asking this question right now of the Geelong football Oh, I, I'd say there'd be those type of questions being asked because that means Geelong have failed again in a prelim. And they have, and they did it in hey, a way don't. that they've brought these players in in a to, you know, to try and to, to win, to really, try and win that because they got yeah. to the GF yeah. last Correct. year yep. and they lost. Yep. And so therefore, they Correct. went. All right, we're going to go a step further. Mm-hmm. We're going to bring in uh, mm-hmm. Isaac Smith. What, what, we're going to bring what, in Sean Higgins. And, and I, you don't Jeremy want to be Clement. critical of any player because it's not easy playing no. our great game. And no. and what these boys have to go through to play, you know, with the the virus situation. But surely, when you turn up to play, all you want your player to do is be competitive and just have a go. 
Where's yeah. Gary Rowan? What, where's oh, what, what's yeah. his? Where does he go from here after that performance last night? Because he will be getting smashed on socials. Yeah. His own supporters will be whacking him to the end of his life. Mm. What, what happens there with a guy that had one disposal for the whole game of football? What happens with a uh, small forward is a tough position to play. And so, therefore, when he lights it up and it all looks rosy, mm. you are reliant on a lot of delivery yeah, and you're, and you're yeah, very okay. reliant on the way the game plays. Yeah. But to have one possession, surely... I was getting surely, all these text messages last night. Surely saying, you is bring, Gary there? Yeah, and this... Oh. If you are in that sort of position, you know. surely you can work your way into yeah. a game in some capacity, even if it's not even touches, but even if you're just bringing well, lay a pressure. Tackle. How many tackles did he lay? Yeah, I don't think many, mate. Well, I don't see, think many. That, yeah, they're questions. How many? Zero. <laughs> see, there you go. <laughs> and don't use I was injured and a bit sore. No, everyone's, mate, every, sore. everyone's sore but and anyway, injured by a prelim it's final. It's exciting. So. so the Melbourne Football Club march into the grand final next week. Mm. So they will be icing up and just feeling real good about themselves. And it's great for their supporter base. I'm not surprised. Bernie Vince hasn't come flying in a parachute somewhere, hey, mate. Because he will he's be already up. on the plane. He's, he's gone. Gone. He's, he's, on, he's on the plane. He's already over in Perth. He's just uh, he's now, icing up himself. I think. Now, he's, um, now tonight, yes, this is going to be a ripping game of footy. Surely, Oof, is it ever, mate? The city is turning it on. I reckon Port Adelaide. Full house. There's a lot of good momentum going for Port Adelaide yeah, at the moment. Okay. I think a month ago they took over as the number one team in the state mm-hmm. for members. And um, there's a lot of, like I said, a lot of good vibes going on. So I think they just need to capitalise on that. And as a playing group, they know what's at You're stake. You're unchanged? Yeah, unchanged. Fantastic. Yeah. Western Bulldogs banged up a bit. Alex Keith's a big loss. Big, big loss. Right. Because who ends up going to Big Charlie? Well, that's a great question. And and weren't allowed to train on the Adelaide Oval oh. because Arnie Arnie Nicola <laughs> said, "Oh no, you can't train on there." You know, do, uh, what way do you reckon that goes? Do you think that goes from a player's let perspective? Let them train on there. But oh mate, they train totally. on the other grounds. Why can't we the, just let them train? The, oh, they've been in WA. Rubbish. They've been in WA, yeah, which hasn't had a case no, either yeah, for five. Yeah, I, I found that so oh, bizarre. But at the same time, does that go into the place of? Western Bulldogs are going to come out sluggish, or does it come into Luke Beveridge using that against and, oh, I and think almost building that. it up? But at the end of the day, they just get on with it because they're professional footballers. I'll just get on with it. Yeah, but I, I just think but it's a bit it... petty from our people. You know, let them train for a half hour on the oval. Crikey. Yeah. Oh, mate, it, it was you know, bizarre. Anyway, but <laughs> bit, bit to okay. unpack. One triple three five three. Give us a call, or you can get us on the Auto Masters text line, like DC in Salisbury North did. Geelong should have played Dan Andrews. He knows how to shut down Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> Oh four triple eight five one oh four seven. And we've got fifty dollar vouchers for you to go and spend at the Steel Shop in Fulham. We certainly do. So if there's anything you want to pipe up about with the finals, give us a call here at Dead Set Legends. Triple M. Triple M's Dead Set Legends, one triple three five three. A lot happening last night, a lot happening this weekend. John in Alberton, what do you make of the whole thing? G'day, John. G'day, mate. How you going? G'day, Johnny. Yeah, good. Thanks, uh, Jazz. All good, mate. Um, I'm just a bit disappointed that our state, you know, just doesn't play the game. You know, these guys are professional. They should be allowed to get on the Adelaide Oval and train for an hour, get familiarised, you know. But we're trying to promote the sport. Well, what's going on here? Oh, it's just backwards. Great. It's a great call, oh, mate. And, and this is okay. what's happening in the whole state. I think I talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. I, just, I, I fear that they're almost going too far down the other path, almost a WA style where they're going, no, nope, no one's allowed mm-hmm. in. Oh, yeah. We can't let anything happen. It's bizarre. In the honest. last two weeks, they've been tested 26 times, the Western Bulldogs That's... football side. And if you just joined us, they weren't allowed to train on our, uh, Adelaide yeah. Oval yesterday mm. just for a little hit out, a little captain's run. Who and else yet, was going to be there? What what well, sort of risk was there going to be? Just their own. Just yeah. own. <laughs> a couple of tourists. <laughs> but you know but what? Can we uh, do the roof walk? Yeah. You know what, John? I don't think it'll affect uh, the Western Bulldogs. No, I don't think it'll outfit. affect them. They'll get on I with it. That, I don't know if it'll affect them. It's just, just unfair, you know. Yeah. Mm. Uh, get familiarised with the ground. You know, yeah. any sporting game in the world has a bit of an opportunity. And plus, why don't we open up the stadium? Last time, we're going to see Port Power play at home. There you go. People can't, people can't go to the West. Yes. Um, oh, no. Open it up the city. Oh, What's And then last night, we saw a full house. Yeah. Yes. Stop it. Yes. Good on you, Johnny. Let's go to uh, Alex of Richmond. Good morning, young man. Oh, g'day, boys. How are you? So Geelong. Uh, that, no, they are cooked. Mm. They they are cooked, and they've been cooked for two years. Two years. Because they're going. Yeah, they've gone down the same path as Hawthorne. Yeah. Collecting players from other uh, other clubs. Yeah. That are at the end of their contract or the end of their career. So mm. now Hawthorne's had to go through and rebuild, and that's why where they are now. Geelong will be in the same position, if not next year, the year after. Who who would you say in particular? Or or are you just saying the whole general vibe of the thirty plus players? Yeah. Well yeah. You, you can't you can't get rid of that much experience. 
and bring new players through. Because what happens, the, the young players that are there, they say, mate, I'm not getting a game. So they look for a place elsewhere. Mm. You know, Tim Kelly's gone. Uh, Narkel, young Narkel, uh, he's struggling to get a game. He yep. wants out. Yep. You know, they're, they're good call, Alex. Have a good weekend. Let's go to Nath from Manopara. Good morning, Nath. How you going, mate? Good, mate. What do you want to uh, say? Uh, just on the Bulldogs not being able to train on Adelaide Oval, I reckon mm. few, I'm a Crow supporter, but I reckon a few years ago, right, he might be able to help me out. Was Port um, not allowed to train on the MCG for some reason or...? Uh, I do remember there was an occasion where they weren't, but that's sometimes that's almost about the not being allowed to touch the surface and stuff like that. They always get very protective of the MCG yeah. surface. So, like in the end, when we did do captains' runs, we used to sneak off to other places Find and somewhere do it. Else, yeah, yeah. yeah, if it was that it was getting smashed up yeah. through winter, mm. uh, it was no, certainly no. not in those sort of reasons where it was you're not allowed to touch the surface at Adelaide Oval because it's certainly not getting overused. That, that's one thing. No. Nath, before I let you go, Jake Kelly leaving, uh, not surprised or a bit disappointed. A uh, bit disappointed, but, you know, not really surprised. Victoria boys want to go home, as they all do, so... Yeah. Okay, mate. Well, all right, buddy. Have a good uh, have a good day watching footy. Thanks for your call, buddy. Thank you. We're yeah. catching up with Jake Kelly in the next 10 minutes. In fact, straight after the overnight scoreboard. Thanks to everyone that's given us a call. $50 voucher to the Stills Shopping Forum. We're going to chuck him a $50 show bag voucher as well, we? gents. Yep, the Adelaide oh. show's been cancelled, but you can still get your show bags delivered. Shop online at showbagshop.com. KG, what uh, rise do you go on when you took your granddaughters to the Royal Show, Cage? Oh, well, you know those, those chairs where you put in $2 and it horrible. <laughs> massages you from the hip <laughs> to the shoulder. That is my, that is my absolutely f- favourite ride. George. <laughs> <laughs> this is Dead Set Legends. Let's uh, talk to an Adelaide Crows man, no longer, has now uh, asked for a trade to a uh, Victorian club. He joins us on the Dead Set Legends. Maybe his last interview before he nicks off from Adelaide, and he's played 110 games for the Crows, and I love the way this bloke competes. Jake Kelly joins us. Good morning, Jake. Thanks for having me, boys. You've got the lucky last interview. Yeah, oh, mate, it's Jake. <laughs> bloody emotional. Well, it's an honour yeah, for you. To, it's an honour for you to come on, mate. That's we really appreciate your time, and <laughs> um, and yeah, it's it's great to have you on. I guess firstly, I'd just love to know the key determinants for the reason. You know, you've played 110 games now for the Crows, um, been a really strong defender in the competition. Uh, what what were the key reasons for leaving? Yeah, look, I've I've done eight years here. Um, when I came over, honestly, it was I was very much a Melbourne boy uh, and always had ambitions to get back to Melbourne. Um, I didn't really ever think I'd last eight years. Um, so after after this year, I really sat down and thought that this was probably the right time. Um, largely geared around family, I wanted to get back back to my family. Um, I've been away for for eight years, like I said, and um, yeah, it just felt like the right time. I've Playing 100 games for the club was really important to me, um, and I did that this year, and um, that was really special. So I leave without a premiership, but um, fulfilled in the respect that I feel like I gave the club everything I could um, from a tenure point of view and um, managed to play 100 games for the club, which I'm proud of. Yeah, you certainly did, mate. And and I guess that sort of falls into the question of, do you still feel like the Crows have that recipe for success? And, and was it an issue of you feeling like you didn't have the time to sort of see out the Crows rebuild? Or was there, like you said, just more that family side of it? Yeah, it's it's I want, one thing I want to make clear as well is that the, the Crows are in a great spot. And um, when I informed the club yesterday, I really reiterated to them that I think the club's going in an amazing direction. Um, they've got fantastic people led by Nixie. Scotty Burns is doing a fantastic job down there as well and the assistant coaches. Mm. Uh, they're going in a really, really solid direction um, and I'm really comfortable with the direction they're going. It's merely a case of getting back um, to to family and, and the fact also that there's the Crows are in a stage where they're rebuilding um, and I'm obviously in the stage of my career where... Um, I'm probably looking for something a bit different. So yeah, we just we just didn't didn't marry up 100. percent um, And yeah, I'm completely comfortable where it's all at and where the club's going. Now, Jake, I know North Melbourne were very keen to uh, uh, get you uh, into their program, but you're off to the Essendon Football Club to join your your former teammate, the Big Truck, the Big Oink Oink. <laughs> You're not going to like this, but um, yeah, I can't really comment on what's happening with me um, under the AFL rules. So, yeah, just give us a hint, like Jake. 
you probably won't like the answer to that question. Yeah, Bugger. I'm you're in the free agency process. Yeah, I'm, okay. um, I'm obliged not to comment on that. <laughs> oh, well, <there> <laughs> I'm giving, I'm giving the real cliche. I have yeah. trust. That a, was a beautiful delivery outside of stump. Very and scripted, and, and you <laughs> just left it uh, into the keeper's gloves, didn't you, mate? And well that left. Has, that has thrown all of my further questions. <laughs> 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 Do your homework then, Brad. Oh, of course, mate, I have. <laughs> sorry, I thought I did boys, the homework. Sorry, boys. In, a, in a few weeks, I'll, uh, I'll get back on. <laughs> All right, well, what, what are you looking for in the next club then? Let's go down mm, that path. What, what are the key things that you're looking for in that next club that, uh, that you feel you know, are keys to the reason you'll choose that one? Yeah, look, I'm looking for a club that's going to give me a really solid role, and which I've had at Adelaide, which I've absolutely loved. Um, Obviously, um, it's going to be a Victorian club, which is a given. So, the family aspect ticked off in that respect, and I want to want to win premierships and, and win finals. That's um, that's that's why you play and, and why I feel you have to play, and that's always going to be um, a main driving factor in any decision. So, um, yeah, the, the ability to play finals and, and and win premierships is is, is massive. Now, uh, your dad, Craig Kelly, is he still your manager or do you have someone else under the TLO, a TLA banner? Because I could imagine that would have been a funny conversation with Justin Reid being a former employee of Craig uh, with the negotiations on that front. Yeah, I uh, actually leave that out of it um, these days. He is not my manager and tends to be playing golf <laughs> four out of five days a week. Smart um, man. So he, he doesn't have... I, don't, I actually don't speak to him regularly about the contract situation at all. Adam Ramanaskis does my stuff and does a fantastic job, so yeah. he's the guy I bounce off, yeah. And uh, Jakey, yeah, we're talking to Jake Kelly. Now, I played against your dad, and obviously he tried to whack me a few times, so the nickname Cement Head. Do you call your dad Cement Head from time to time? <laughs> he's got a rock-solid peel, doesn't he? Hasn't he? doesn't get wow. phased at all when he gets hit with a big with their head. There was a few times that we, we grew up on the farm. Yeah. Um, as kids and he would get hit he, I remember he dropped something on his head it was a brick or something and just walked on <laughs> no, was not phased by it <laughs> mate you've oh. been an absolute beauty for the Adelaide Crows uh, the word I'll use is the res- you've got a lot of respect uh, amongst your peers and your teammates and uh, love the way you play footy you love the contest so all the best on your new journey mate and uh, take care Appreciate you having me on. It means a lot to me, so thank you very much. Good no boy. worries, mate. There Good he luck. goes, Jake Kelly, off to a new club uh, in Victoria, Essendon Footy Club. Oh, so for hey, him. What? Oh, hey. Hang on a second. Triple M's Dead Set Legends get down to the district at Sky City. You could be bagging the last port prelim tickets we have. There is a brand new podcast on our listener app called The Rock Pod. Tommy Rockcliffe and oh. Dits, and they preview Port's prelim clash via the Bulldogs mm. and Port's re-signing best and fairest winner Darcy Byrne Jones when he drops in. Now we've got the man himself on the phone. Power to Power to Come, Come on. on. The two Port Adelaide Oh, my God. <laughs> Wow. G'day, Tommy. Good morning to you. <laughs> you didn't Good even morning. know the club song, mate. That's embarrassing. Uh, when was that? I probably still don't, Josh. <laughs> where was the vigour? Where was, yeah, the, where was the passion hasn't... from you, mate? You know, you won a lot of games off your boot for Port Adelaide. So what happened? <laughs> You're not wrong. I won plenty off my own boot, didn't I? But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, there was, there was no passion. I, I need to fire up a bit like you did last night. Are we all good? Oh, Ooh, nah, we're going to have a chat off air. Oh, so, no, no, of your, no, no, no. Uh, some no, of the no. text messaging uh, between Rock and I last night was pretty brutal. You hate talking off air. You always want it to be brought up. Go on. No, no. We'll, Go on. No, Go. we can't. We can't. <laughs> can't we you, can't. Can we, Rock? It was a bit, it was a bit uh, jumpy last night, Jazz. Oh, didn't, no, like, didn't you, like the feedback. Yeah, but no, he never does. You know what? I'll, I'll tell you what he did say. Oh, oh, he's gone. Now, for, he's gone for the phone. Yeah, I'm going for my phone, and it was very hurt. No, nah, you know what? He might be right. Hang on, I got to find it. Just talk. No. To him. <laughs> Just don't bring up personal text messages. Hang on, so, <laughs> so, what did you talk about yesterday in the podcast with Dits, the Rock Pod? What do you think of the name the, as well, mate? Oh, what a ridiculous well, name that is. <laughs> the Rock Pod. We uh, we spoke about pretty much all things Port Adelaide in the lead up to tonight's game. So. Just a little bit of an insight. We've got Darcy Byrne Jones on. He had a he had a good chat, but we just talked matchups and, and how we think the game will go. Okay. There you go. And so have you got anything uh No, well I found it. I, found I, it I texted eight fourteen last night uh, to to uh, Byrne and Rock. Uh, G Rowan still hasn't touched it. Oh my god, though that was my text message. Okay. And then within a whisker. He hates finals, a bit like brother of Darren Jarman. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was 
That was oh, bloody. That's good. That, that was, is good. That was brutal. <laughs> That, that's not very nice from Bernie to say that. Oh. <laughs> now, your boys tonight, um, you can't do any more. It is time to uh, turn up tonight. It's show time. No excuses tonight, Tommy, for your football club, is there? No, there's no excuses. I think we're, we're primed. We've had the week off. We're, we're in a really good position as a football club at the moment. The boys have had an outstanding week on the track, set ourselves up really well. So I, I'm sure they'll leave it all out there tonight and... Hopefully we can walk away with a, a good win. Is there anything that the fans can look out for? Is there any key matchups that they're really looking forward to watching, or even the way that the boys are going to play? Is it the same as always, or is there going to be anything to try and curtail? I guess your uh, your Bonton Pellies and the like. No, not really, Ebo. Uh, last time we clearly ha- have a focus on Libertore. He's a he's a very good clearance player, and uh, I've spoken about it before. But he runs it about 80% first hands to clearance rate, which is about 20 to 25% better than the next in the competition. So it just shows how much and how important he is. And and Willem Drew got that match up last time. So whether he goes to him again or or we mix it up, we'll just have to wait and see. They play play a few... Sorry about the dogs in the background. I don't know. They must be chasing a cat or something. (laughs) uh, Jack's pulling the tail. Hopefully hopefully the dogs won't be barking tonight. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, that's the aim of me. For us, it's just about stopping that because if those inside players, McRae, Bonson, Pally, Liberatore, get it to the outside, Hunter, Smith, that's where they get, get their game going. So they've, they've, last week they brought Dunkley up to the stoppage to go to Neil. Whether they do that again, if they send him up to a Ollie or, or Bokey, we'll just have to wait and see. But I think it's going to be a, a real arm wrestle in the midfield and see how our defence stands up, which has been really strong for, for a couple of seasons now. And then we feel like we have a really potent forward line with Charlie leading that, but then the smalls at his feet. And we obviously have Pete Laddams, Toddy Marshall down there as well. So we feel like we have a lot of weapons across the field. And if we play our best footy, it, it matches up well against the dog's best. Hey, Dave. Oh, yeah. Put the oh, no, 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 no. I was, I was, I was, just, gi- I was just giving you <laughs> no, an indication yeah. of that time. Four <laughs> minutes 50. Rocky. What's, you what's trying to wrap me up? No, well, that's no. I'm going the opposite way. I thought we were going on for all day. So, what's the rev up? <laughs> You're on the boundary line nowadays. You're helping the boys out from the actual coach's, you know, seat. Uh, what sort of words of wisdom have you got for him? Oh, hello. hello. Well, as you know, Evo, it can get a little bit um, worked up on the bench at different oh, yeah, times. So, my my role I see is just to keep the boys calm okay. as best I can. Oh, okay. Yeah. And be a little calming influence, whisper in their ear, look, this is mm. working, this isn't working. Make sure you're on your toes, make yeah. sure you're moving. So I speak directly to the midfielders more so than um, than anyone else, but I'll just sort of whisper in their ear, give them a pat on the back, tell them they're doing a good job and, and then move forward and just pass them the phone. If Scully's got a message for him, Jared Schofield is a midfield coach, so I have a direct line to him and just talk to him. It's, it's pretty hard to see at ground level the, the trends of the game, so you rely on a bit of information from up, up in the box. Now, Rock, you get through, play West uh, the the Melbourne Football Club. <laughs> no, Melbourne you Football are. Club was demolished Geelong last night. Now, you, your chairman David Kosh has been locked out of Western Australia. That cannot happen. Koshy needs to be there with his football club. He's done a great job since he's been uh, put into the uh, the big dog chair. Can you can you try and get him in somehow? Why don't you drive him? Why don't you two just get in the car and drive across the Nullar Ball? Oh, I, would, I would do I would do that if I if I could, Jars. But I think he tried to get an exemption to get into South Australia and they declined it. So he's going to do oh. two weeks. He's going to do two weeks here and then go over to Perth. But I think they knocked it back. Was what he said. Who, the government yesterday. knocked it. Back. Who's they? Oh. Yeah, Mr. Marshall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yep. Oh. I believe so. That, <laughs> wow. That's. That's what that's what he said yesterday, isn't it? Yeah, I, I thought not... port people look after their own. Mr. Well, Marshall's yeah. a port man. He should be looking after his chairman. I'm, I, I think that's what happened. I was only reading the headline yesterday, and I think really? that's what he said. So, yeah, okay. hmm. um, yeah, if anyone deserves to be there, it's certainly Koshy. He came in, and Evo would know a lot more than me, but the work he's done, he's done a mountain of work over the years to, to get Port Adelaide back in a, a strong financial position, and, and we're still working away at that. And Koshy's a huge reason for, reason for that. Yeah, he certainly has. And and I guess between him, Kenny, KT, and now mm. Richo, I just yeah. think they've got a really strong Chrissy foundation. Davies. Chris yeah. Davies as well. I think that they've um, bloody exciting. really built a, a yeah. strong group. And it's a strong getting club, close, Bradley. So. 
Yeah, mate. Well, anyway, Rocky, good luck to you and the boys tonight. Um, mm. We'll be here. I'll be cheering very, very loudly. Yeah, no and, doubt uh, you will. And I'll be uh, up and about. So, uh, anyway, mate, good luck. Hopefully the boys can get through and we can speak to you in the next couple of weeks and you know, in the lead-up to a grand final. Thanks for having me, Brett and Darren. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's good. Okay, okay. <laughs> Tommy Rockliffe, the Rock Pod. It is Tom Rockliffe oh, and Chris what? Dimmer. Why we give him a plug? Rock Pod. <laughs> the, the, rock, the, the Rock Pod. Yeah. Um, <laughs> did you have anything to do with the naming of that rock? Oh, did... Rock. No, nah, he's, he's, he's gone. He's gone. No one listened to it before I'm told. <laughs> Jay Clark pulls apart last night's big win from the D's next. Triple M's Dead Set Legends with Brad Ebert and Andrew Jarman. Now, if you watch 7 News tomorrow night at 6, you'll see a code word. Take note of it and let us know next week for your crack to win tickets and travel to the 2021 Toyota AFL Grand Final. Now, which is not here, but. No, it should be here. It, it should be here. Now, normally we go with either one of you two lads when we do this. At home. The legend, legends, legends. But why not go home with another legend who is the Dead Set Legends producer, Tom? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Hado. Very nervous morning today. You are one of the I biggest Port fans <laughs> we've ever seen or heard about. Yes. And I think your morning's going pretty good so far. Well, it has gone very well so far. A bit yeah. of a surprise, Bradley Evert. You, you've just... Uh... Yeah, mate. Well, this is. I know you are one of the biggest Port fans oh, going around. Please. I've seen the pictures of your bedroom. <laughs> yes. Well, what's in it? Well, go on. You can explain to everyone what's in your bedroom, Tom. So the, the it's a it's a basically a museum of Port Adelaide. My bedroom, <laughs> just, <laughs> pretty much. Just hey. four walls of Port memorabilia. Tom, how old are you? I'm twenty. You're a grown man. I'm a grown man, <laughs> supposedly. Oh, I love it though. I, almost, I think Triple M need to put up a picture of his bedroom. No, oh, they have. Don't, oh, they have. <laughs> Don't oh, worry. Yeah. The, oh, that's and they wouldn't have even got some known. nice feedback in the comments as well, yeah. which is good. So, Tommy, um, <laughs> tonight are you going tonight? Are oh, we there? Don't okay. worry. Yep. Is your family all heavily, heavily involved in Port? Uh, they have. They don't really have much choice now, but yeah, my dad will be there tonight. <laughs> so, who's your all-time favourite Port Adelaide player? I reckon Chad Corns is up there. Ooh, yeah, love yeah, Chad. Yeah, Brad, Brad Ebert's up there. Don't go. Oh, there it is. Well done, mate. Don't go there. I, I love working with you as well. Tom. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Now, if your boys get through tonight, are you going? <laughs> yeah, I've booked. I've, I've booked already. Um, flights and accommodation for mm. Perth, so they'd want to get up tonight. <laughs> One triple three five three port. Oh, oh, oh. How much have you oh. spent so far on the grand final? Yeah. That I mean, you'll more than likely get into. Let us know because we want to know how much cash you spent, Tommy. How much have you spent just to get over? So fast. Well, well, what happened was last year I booked Brisbane. <laughs> oh, you did. <laughs> so some flight credit has been used. Thankfully. Oh wow. Years. From last year. I booked Brisbane. I booked yeah, Brisbane, Jarvis. Yeah, doesn't, oh, doesn't now, fill me with confidence. Say you, lose by, <laughs> say you lose by a point tonight against the Western Bulldogs. Oh, why would you well, say that? No, no but no, well, we've got to see both sides of it because yeah. the Western Bulldogs will be very competitive tonight. Yeah. Yeah, they will be. So what, what will you be doing then tomorrow? Well, then you might have to find somebody else to produce next week. I've already started. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'll still be recovering, I think. Any in Nuri Upta, how much have you spent on getting uh, over to WA for the grand final? Oh, um... Probably about 1,500 so oh, far. Oh, hang on, Annie. How are you? Hello, Hello Bradley. How Annie. are you? Oh, you going we, very I know well. Annie, do I? You know, you know Annie. No, I know Annie. But a great port supporter, yes. great lady. Good to hear from you, Annie. You confident, yeah, Annie? Yeah, you too. Oh, I'm yes. feeling very sick. <laughs> a lot of port fans are at the moment. Very nervous. Very <laughs> nervous. And we don't, let's not get carried away. Like, they need to win the game tonight. So let's not go they too do. far ahead, no. Tommy. Let's stay in the moment. We've got a big game tonight. I know all the boys are eager and keen. So, yes. But, geez, Annie, that's a When fair, will you fly out? If you, once you know your boys are through tonight, what, when do you fly out, Annie? Um, six o'clock next Thursday morning. Yep. And I think I'll fly back about seven o'clock. Sunday oh. Sunday morning. So, Tommy, how much, like you've spent a fair bit with the credits, but what's your fly-out schedule for next week if Paul gets in? So, so not, obviously the week after, because yeah, you've got yeah, the fly, of yeah, course. So yeah. I'm leaving after our show on Thursday. I'll ruin this. So I'll be <laughs> yeah. going straight to the airport. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not going to be here for Dead Set Legends? Oh, Tommy. I might not be. For, well, unless you want to be produced from Perth, no. I won't no. be there that day. Oh, you well, better front up. Mate. Annie, Annie, is it perfectly acceptable for any Port fan in this situation to either skip work or take time off or even fudge a little sick leave to be there for Port Adelaide. 
Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> Almost a bit, Enjoy, of a, uh, a bit of a Bob Hawk sort of thought. <laughs> yes, exactly right. <laughs> exactly <laughs> right, Eve. Right? Oh, oh Addy. 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 Oh, Jazz, this is where we need to stay in the moment, boys. We need to stay oh, in the moment. We? We've right. got a big one tonight. Very Let's nervous. not get too yeah. carried away about All next right, week. This but is, they're nervous. Yeah. It is. Hey, we're did excited. We, I reckon did we even mention who was my, the special guest this morning? Mm, no, no, I don't no, think so. no, no, we don't. I think no. we can do that. But I will say this, Annie, we're going to give you a $50 show bag voucher just so you can go to the showbagshop.com.au and get a couple of show bags because the show was cancelled, but you can still get the fun. Thank you very much, boys, and I love your work, Bradley. Uh, thank you, Annie. Thanks, Annie. Thanks, Annie. There's four <laughs> other people that work here. This is Dead Set Legends. <laughs> Triple M's Dead Set Legends with Brad Ebert and Andrew Jarman very soon. We're going to be checking the Dead Set Legends voicemail. Time to catch up with a bloke that's as tired, especially this time of year, as Bernie Vince. How are you feeling? I'm f- <laughs> Dead Set Legends with Ebo Bluey and Jars presents AFL Newsbreaker, Jay Clark. G'day, mate. Welcome to the Dead Set Legends this morning. It's only Bradley Ebert and I this morning. Blew it still away, uh, getting his nails done and uh, getting his Botox done in Kangaroo Island. Welcome, mate. <laughs> it's great to be with you, boys. I understand Bluey is a big fan of a pedicure. Is it a manicure? It's one of the two, anyway. He's got <laughs> one of those gold memberships you get two a week or you whatever said it is. You colonic You're... wrong. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jay, last night, what is the fallout uh, regarding yes. the Geelong Football Club? And that list needs a massive yeah. overhaul. Oh, it's significant, Charles. I mean, we can't um, we can't sugarcoat the truth here. The Cats face a massive fork in the road. They're at a real crossroad with their list, with all the 30-year-olds that we saw last night. I mean, the concern was they were, they were going to be a bit slow. Did they have the juice? Could they keep up with a power-packed, dynamic Melbourne midfield? And the Ds absolutely took them to the sword in that department. 101 points, I think, from stoppages. Now, Ooh. that is an absolute slaying. And now the Cats have got these 30-year-olds, and there'll be meetings over the next week or so to establish a direction, really, from here. And I want, I want to know from you guys, i got my thoughts, I want to know from you guys, who you think are the most vulnerable here? Who do the Cats need to take forward, and who could be left on the side of the road? So you've got Mark Blitzarves, Luke Dalhouse, Patrick Dangerfield, Mitch Duncan, Cam Guthrie, Tom Hawkins, Sean Higgins, Sam Menegola, Joel Selwood, Isaac Smith, and Zach Tui are all over 29. Wow. Ray Stanley, Ooh. Gary Rowan, and Lockie Henderson as well. We've plus you've got Jeremy Cameron, Tom Stewart, 28. It is the oldest list in the competition. You just feel like they're going very close to that cliff edge. Yeah, now, for me, are. the standouts, Luke, Luke, Luke Dalhouse, question mark, um, Hent, Lockie Henderson, uh, question mark. Sean Higgins, big question mark. What, yep. what do you? Wh- who do you think is the most vulnerable there? I think you've probably touched on the main three. I think even the the performance of Gary Rowan last night. Like, uh, I'm not sure how much longer he's going to be able to sustain that sort of level um, at AFL level. I think you just touched on Sean Higgins as well, didn't you? Reese Stanley, yep. um, yeah, that's a tough one, I guess, for, for him because he's still performing reasonably well at certain times. But um, mate, they've certainly got some headaches, don't they? Giles, you got anyone else to add on that list? Oh, I have a clean out. Yeah. Yeah, for me, it's a big clean out. But you're talking Tomahawk, you're talking Joel Selwood. Uh, level, not so or? much those two, because yeah. you can you can put move Joel Selwood to the forward line. But anyway... And the, the culture that they're yeah, sort of holding. Yeah, absolutely. I still absolutely. think Mitch Duncan's a star and needs to stay. Cam Guthrie's another one that they still need to And you've got to look at Chris Scott. Where's he at? Well, it's a good question, because he's out of contract at the end of next year, and we know that Carlton, at the top of their... CEO wish list is a man called Brian Cook who knows Chris mm. Scott as well as anyone now remember Chris Scott stepped into the Geelong Footy Club when they were cherry ripe already remember Mark Thompson handed over he came in and, and took the Cats to a premiership in his first flag in uh, right. first year in 2011 Chris Scott but so has he developed you know the question mark is can he go and teach all these young kids can he go and hit the draft is he that sort of a coach or now does Carlton and you know they're going to ask the question they've got interviews lined up this week is Carlton going to make that big play for Chris Scott? He's a proven coach. That would be a coup. Cool. So it's going to be interesting now whether Geelong try and, with Brian Cook seemingly out the door, extend the contract of Chris Scott to try and take this Carlton option at the table because you know they're going to be throwing big money, big contracts around. Yeah, certainly plenty to talk about on that front. But let's talk about Melbourne. Now, that mm. was some kind of performance Ooh, last night. Mate. Three points. And they are playing unbelievable football. But there's also that um, there's also the downside for say Nathan Jones and, and a few injuries yep. there. What's the take? What, what's your yeah. take on it all? So, so Nathan Jones' uh, partner Jerry um, is expecting twins basically any day now. So 
Um, he didn't. He was an emergency last night and didn't do the training with the other emergencies after the game. So does that a sign that perhaps he knows he's probably not going to play in the grand final yeah. in two weeks' mm. time? Is he going to head home with his family and be there for the birth of his kids? Now, this bloke has been through it all, isn't he? Mm. He's a spiritual beacon for them. This is going to be pretty tough if Melbourne are unchanged as it's expected. So uh, James Jordan is the young midfielder. He was the sub last night. I mean, you'd, you'd think that the Demons are going to uh, keep an unchanged team. Simon Goodwin, very confident in Stephen May, yep. who tweaked his hamstring last night, will be good to go. Of course, this is where the bye helps him, doesn't he? They get the two weeks lead into the grand final in a fortnight's time, and Melbourne's certainly thinking that they'll be unchanged at this stage. So it's heartbreak for Nathan Jones, and whether he just comes home and be there for his family, it's um, heartbreaking for him. Now, mate, just before we uh, wrap it up, Jake Kelly, yep. now uh, he's obviously told the Crows he's off to Melbourne. And yep. Jordan Dawson, Port Adelaide or Adelaide Crows from the Sydney Swans. Give me some good news, young man. <laughs> yeah, no, Dawson, <laughs> Dawson has got that elite left foot. So you'd think that Port Adelaide, or we oh, think that Port Adelaide no. is front of the queue. Them, It's nah, the Zach Merritt boy. money. Oh, remember, boy. That, remember that Port wanted Zach Merritt for Messon. They couldn't right. get him. Yeah. They got a little pocket of cash there so that saved up so for someone. Mm. Now, he can add that layer of class to the Port Adelaide midfield. Jay Kelly Essendon is absolutely wrapped with him. Statistically, he's the second best one-on-one -on -one defender in the competition. He's lost something like 30 out of his last 200 one-on-one -on -one contests. It's a three-year wow. deal. Uh, yeah, it's phenomenal, his stats. He's going to play as a, as a shutdown sort of small defender because the Papleys and the Camerons have sort of stitched up the Bombers a little bit. So it's a targeted move. They get in for the small defender, three-year deal, and then Adelaide get potentially a second, more likely a third-round uh, draft pick as free agency compensation. But that depends on the secret herbs and spices. And I don't know if, if Gil McLaughlin just rolls the dice and see what number comes up. I don't know how that works. We're all a bit confused. Good on you, Jake. Uh, well done, young man. And we'll speak again next week on the uh, Rush Hour, JJ. Good on you, boys. See, See you, mate. mate. Jay Clark there. Triple M's Dead Set Legends with Brad Ebert and Andrew Jarman. A very good luck to not just everyone that's competing today, but your son, Stefan, who's just run out onto the field, Charles. Yeah, uh, playing in the uh, C-grade grand final for the Henley Sharks, Best taking on the old Iggies. Are you going to go down there after this? Well, how can I? I've got to go to... Oh, you've got to go out to Williston. Exactly. It's all central, yeah. And yeah, um, some yes, inspiring hey, words of wisdom from Stefan's dad yeah, on the text. <laughs> Bring home milk and a, t and a two litre of Pepsi, please. So there fantastic, just fantastic. Yeah. Good on really you. quickly, boys, the last prelim tickets we have, we've still got one pair right. left. So how are they going to get them? Okay, today we're yeah. going to be down at the district at Sky City, which, as you know, Great with, spot. with this crew, you say, oh, let's throw the work card down at the district, yeah. and these boys are like... We will be giving away our last double right. pass to watch Port Adelaide take on the Bulldogs at Adelaide Oval from 7.10 tonight. So get okay. down there from 1.30, and it's all thanks to the crew at the District at Sky City, Adelaide's ultimate entertainment well destination. Now, I've just got, a got some text, text messages. Here. What do you got, Yeah, now, Bob? do you remember Sean, um, probably six weeks ago, yes. coming on and talking, uh, Sean Fay coming on yep. and talking about doing a, a walk for charity? Yes. He just said, Jars, Sean here, completed the walk for the kids with cancer. Thanks for the support, boys. Sean, you so superstar. Well done, well done, well done Sean. Sean. Congratulations. Congratulations, mate. You've got a big heart. Well done, yeah, mate. Incredible. Proud of you, buddy. So uh, hopefully Any you some money. And, uh, well, the other one was the funny one about Geelong, but I'm still still what laughing is, at oh. Geelong. Should have played Dan Andrews. He knows how to shut down Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> still, they got me every time. Uh, that's the main two. So anyway. Now, uh, young men, uh, the last couple of days, uh, sports players could return to the field within minutes after a major head knock. I want to talk to you about this because you were heavily involved in a lot of head knocks because of the way you played. Mm -hmm. Fearless. Right. Uh, thanks to a revolutionary test that can diagnose concussion almost instantly. Now, a finger prick blood test will uh, be able to show the person uh, if he's got concussion uh, within minutes after the injury, Bradley, and he can return to the field straight away. Yeah, this is Your big. thoughts? I just thought I'd pick your brain on this one. Look, mate, I guess everything in the concussion space to this point has been very subjective. They, they come, they do these tests, and it's very hard to, to pinpoint, okay, that is exactly concussion, so therefore they, they err on the side of caution, which I believe is very fair and very good. Yeah. Anything that can come in to say, okay, this is scientifically proven that yes that's a concussion yep. that it you know when you tear a hamstring you've got the test that you know all right that's definitely a hamstring or there's at least something coming so i think in this sort of space it's really strong and i think that 
the further they go down this path, the more they can help so many players, not just at AFL level, but also those junior grades down below yeah. where they end up getting knocked out. Yep. They're sort of feeling groggy and, and mm. sh- you know pretty shabby for mm. a week or so, and then they're going to work, and work's not going to cover all that sort of stuff. Hey, do you, as someone that's, that's unfortunately copped a few, can you mm. tell the difference personally when it comes to, no, nah, that's just a nasty knock and I can shake this off or I, I'm feeling pretty concussed, or is it is it a bit blurry? Uh, there's certainly some blurry sides to it, but mm. at the same time, by the end, I could certainly tell, okay, this is more than just a, a knock that I'm able to, to bounce yeah. off and, and go again. But at the same time, as a 16-year-old kid, you get thrown around and you're feeling this deja vu sense and you're, you're running yeah, around going, point. is it, is it not? Uh, what, what am I feeling here? Mm. So I think that when you get tests like this, it actually gives you that objective data that says, yeah. oh, you are concussed, that is it for your day, you need to go recover. Be- or on the contrary, look, mate, you're okay here. It, mm. this, is, this is something that you'll be able to bounce back from and it's not actually going to be classified as a proper concussion. So if it is, I think it, it's something to do with um, your micro RNA uh, and mm. something that's going on with the brain healing. So I think if they're getting down to that molecular level, and I think it's really good in terms of the science that's progressing. And I know I spoke about something a few months ago in the same sort of space where if they're able to diagnose it quicker and better, you can treat it better yeah. and, and then you're able to sort of come back from it. So Because the old testing, mm-hmm. concussion testing, is is it doesn't help at all because a professional well, was on the TV last night and he said, you know, the player following the finger and counting to five backwards, he said that, and, that's no good anymore. And the remembering, num- uh, he said remembering names it's and reciting it back. Yeah. And, so th- there's certainly there's scope for that because that's that's the available science at the time. You right. know, that, that's what they've got to deal with. So therefore yeah. they're trying their best to be able to diagnose with what they have. So uh, no, I think any sort of improvement in this sort of space mm. is, is a good thing. A good thing, thing yeah. Mm. Ebo, what happens when the, you know, when the doctors come running up the first thing after you've been concussed? Like, do they start immediately on, you know, Know, what what do they ask you when when you sort of like you sort of get your bearings? I wouldn't have a clue, hey, do Because <laughs> you're knocked out. <laughs> I don't no. mean knocked oh, out. No, I know when what you mean, mate. you consciousness. Oh, what no. is what I'm talking about? On a about. Sunday morning, we got seven bottles of whiskey around <laughs> well, your guts. Hey. Can you remember Hado, what we're talking? Can you remember what we were talking about an yeah. hour ago? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, just putting it out there. <laughs> no, but uh, they certainly, you can remember some of yeah, it. But yeah, uh, yeah nah. they, they normally come, get you off the ground and steady mm. you, and then they start talking. Yeah, yeah good. So, All yeah. right. Tommy Rockcliffe up next, hey, and We'll see if he's got concussion. Well, maybe. <laughs> Speaking of somebody that doesn't remember what happened an hour ago. <laughs> yeah. Triple M's dead set <laughs> legend. <laughs> We've got our text line for Auto Masters. Use it, family. 04 triple eight five one zero four seven. We love this man. He joins us every Saturday morning on the Dead Set Legends. Uh, good morning, uh, Gregory. Morning, Legends. How are we? Now, who's going to win tonight? Port Adelaide or the Western Bulldogs uh, at the uh, sold-out Adelaide Oval, young man? I love the great city of Adelaide and the state of SA. I'll get lynched if I don't say Port Adelaide. Yeah, <laughs> you will too, young <laughs> man. You will too. <laughs> now, let's just talk some motorsport. Looks like it's down to one bid to buy the supercars with the, a key player revealing that they're out of the race. What has hell happened? Well, basically, at this sort of stage, as you guys know, there's a bit of confidentiality around the, the whole uh, process here. But it does sound like they've moved into a position where they're exclusively dealing with one party. And that party looks like it's the Mark Scaife TLA Australian Racing Group bid, which is very strong. So overnight, Peter Adderton, who runs uh, Boost Mobile and has supported a number of the drivers, um, uh, he's in a, a bid with McDoohan, Paul Morris, the 2014 Bathurst winner, and uh, it was rumoured to be tied in with the Brisbane Broncos as well. Peter's revealed that they are out. They're no longer a, a part of it, and that if anything falls over with the other bid, which is now in the primary position, uh, those guys will not be uh, heading back to the negotiating table. They are they are done. They oh, wish them well. Yeah. They had some good plans around engagement and entertainment, but it's uh, it's down to one bid by the looks of it. There you go, Rusty. Wow. Now, now we talked about uh, the young teenager getting Jamie Winkup's drive last week. Will we get a gl- uh, get a glimpse of his talent at Bathurst this year? We will, and uh, based on what Russell Ingle is saying. Uh, we may get a, a window of just how good Brock Feeney is. So he's got, as you point out, Jamie Wincup's drive next year. Brock and Russell are partnering together in a wild card bid at Bathurst. So Russell is not the kind of guy, as you know, to to chase headlines. He speaks his mind, and he's earned that through Bathurst wins and, and championship wins in supercars. What he's, I think, observed of Brock uh, has really impressed him. And he says he believes Brock could get that car 
in the Bathurst top 10 shootout for pole position this year. Amazing Ooh. if the 18-year-old can do that. Pretty cool. Jeez, yeah, that'd be awesome. Now, um, let's turn our attention to F1 quickly at the end here. So, we had a season-best performance from Daniel Ricciardo in qualifying. Um, how's he looking for the Italian F1 tomorrow night? So, they've gone to the format that they trialled at the British Grand Prix, which is that we have qualifying on the Friday and then a sprint qualifying race on Saturday to determine the grid for Sunday. So Dan will line up fifth tonight. Good. The McLarens look really good at this venue at Monza. His teammate is only a fraction in front of him. The Mercs are quickest, Valtteri Bottas fastest. So legendary joint, this one up there um, near Milan in Italy. It'll be an awesome race. And just very quickly, I know we're probably tied on time here, a, a quick roundup of other Aussies abroad. Oscar Piastri, who's our next F1 hope, he leads the F2 series, and he's got pole position there at Monza. Great stuff from him. Mm. Jack Miller, quickest for MotoGP in Spain. Yes. And young Remy Gardner, who leads the Moto2, uh, he's gone fastest there in Spain as well. So it's so great stuff on the international stage. Brilliant stuff, mate. Have a great weekend, and uh, we'll speak next week, young man. Is my passport still allowed to get into Adelaide? Am I okay with that? <laughs> we'll have you, you can stay at my house, Sir Gregory, any time. We'll go fishing. We'll go walk along the beach. We'll your, have a coffee. Your place is like a resort, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> look, only... look, look forward to a little lemonade too. Thank you. <laughs> There's only one man we trust with the keys to the Theatre of Petrol. That's Rusty's Garage Podcast. It's free on our listener app. Let's check the voicemail. You have 11 new messages. 11. G'day, Charles Peter here, mate. I ran into you at Henley Foodland once. <laughs> Just wondering, can you get any free prelim tickets, mate? Uh, good, good buddy of mine. Thank, thanks, mate. <laughs> G'day, Bird Cameron from Adelaide Motors here, mate. I spent three minutes with you before you bought your car off us making you coffee. Just wondering, you know, if you wanted to repay the favour, mate. Do you have any prelim tickets I could have? <laughs> you know, because we're, we're, we're good mates and stuff like that. <laughs> Cheers, bud. <laughs> Uh, g'day, Blue. It's Darren from Northern Gardening. <laughs> yeah. I spent two minutes spraying your weeds at your house uh, a couple of months ago. Um, <laughs> sorry, mate, I can't get your free prelim tickets. Thanks for asking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, it's Ken. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, Christopher Pine uh, w- wants to move uh, the amazing scoreboard at the beautiful Adelaide Oval to uh, make it into a full stadium. Oh, I gotta ask him if he can fish my keys out of my <laughs> wood chipper and, and, and tur- turn it. But oh, uh, your boss. Uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I've uh, had a chat with the IT department, and uh, they've added another 500 terabytes to the uh, podcast service. So uh, <laughs> your producer Todd can keep Burns' facts unedited each show. Uh, <laughs> Well, I was lying here, but I'm sorry I potted you on the contrary about you not really doing much. But seriously, when was the last time you did anything for your country or anything for the cricket community in general? I mean, even down the river, you didn't even bother doing anything. You were out go, yeah, I'll do another one, and then we had to get ready because you know, I had to do shit. <laughs> yeah, g'day, boys. Biggles here. Yes. Port had the week off. I understand that. It's like the time I took a week off after judging the Miss New Royal <laughs> <laughs> Paint top, <laughs> g-string on me head, <laughs> look like a spring roll. <laughs> oh, that's too far, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Ben, Mika from the Stansbury uh, Pub. Yeah, uh, look, everyone's getting up with this bloody port prelim final shit. So <laughs> we've come up with a port meal deal here in the bistro. <laughs> it's two cans of West End. And a headbutt. <laughs> We're already sold out. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and he's done it. Yes. Blue, legend. Very busy time of year. Yep. But I hope you boys had a fantastic Father's Day. Hope you were surrounded with loved ones. Jarvis, heard you got yourself a new shade sale. Yes. Oh, was that a pair of new undies? <laughs> You're back. 20-year anniversary of Remembrance Day, September the 11th, 2001. New York, Washington, D.C. and Pennsylvania got attacked by terrorists. It was a morning that I'll never, ever forget doing the breakfast show for Triple M when we are on Green Hill Road and uh, I was uh, shoulder to shoulder with a beautiful man, Grant Cameron. And we're going to catch up with him very shortly on the show, uh, family, but uh, let's take our minds back 20 years ago to the uh, September 11th. Two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center 
in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. God, I saw the plane hit the building. It just blew up. A big explosion. People started running. It was just chaos everywhere. Unbelievable events in the United States with a series of terrorist attacks in New York City and Washington, D.C., totally destroying the twin towers of the World Trade Center in Manhattan and damaging the Pentagon in the capital. The planes which crashed into the buildings causing the devastation are believed to have been hijacked. It is a question, though, of whether there were any Australians on some of those flights. It is an amazing day in the history of the planet as we know it with four terrorist attacks on uh, strategic targets in the United States, symbolically the World Trade Towers, the centre of finance in America and also with the Pentagon, the centre of the military power. At this stage, uh, there are suspects, but nobody is accepting responsibility for it. The vision coming out of America this morning is quite horrific. To keep hearing reports like the Pentagon's going down, the White House is being evacuated, and we've just seen two towers collapse just right before our eyes. It's just insane. It's, it's really scary. It's really scary. It is Grudge House and Penny on a horrendous morning. Glenn mentioned a number to foreign affairs. We've actually tried to ring that number, which is 1300 555 135, and that is absolutely under siege. Uh, Telstra have just uh, sent a message off. Be patient because uh, mm. they've been inundated with phone calls from uh, Australians here wanting to know about their family and friends back in America. It's absolutely incredible. I've just been listening to reports uh, from the ABC's Prue Clark who said that she saw people jumping out of the 85th floor on fire. Uh, emergency services aren't giving out uh, death toll estimates because it's just too incredible. The, she said that they've seen lots of ambulances going into the area and very few coming out. I was on the 44th floor and that's when the plane hit. People got hit with metals, pieces of glass, and that's right after they announced that number two building is secure. We can go back to work. And as soon as they said that, that's when the second plane hit. They were saying that the two jets uh, were left Boston uh, Airport, and uh, uh, nine o'clock uh, our local time was when they, mm. they left, and uh, the first one hit the first town, then 15 minutes later... Um, people just getting over the uh, impact of the first town. The next minute, there's this second one kamikaze like into the second town. What apparently has happened is that uh, the planes were hijacked very early in the morning when security at uh, airports generally is uh, a little bit perhaps looser than normal. As a result of that, security at all international airports around the world has been absolutely screwed down tight. Flights out of Australia have been stopped. The Qantas yeah. flights and all flights out of Australia have been stopped. Life has stopped right now. All planes have been uh, grounded. There are no flights in or out of the United States. They've closed all the financial centers. Many of the cities have closed their government offices. The United States has been shut down. Wow. To share with us what happened on the morning of the attacks is none other than a very dear friend of mine, Grant Cameron. Good morning, mate. Morning, Josh. Where are those 20 years gone, eh? Oh, <laughs> Grant. Jeez. It, honestly, mate, can you, can you remember about that morning? Vaguely. You know, it was such a, it was such an unreal kind of morning, wasn't it, Josh? I mean, yeah. you sort of, you just can't prepare for a morning like that, you know? It's like, I was actually, I, I, for those who don't know, I, I don't live in South no. Australia anymore, and I, I, I live in a place where nobody knows what I used to do for a living, which is kind yeah. of how I like it. And yeah. I was explaining to somebody the other day about the 9 11 thing, and I said I actually was on air broadcasting when it happened, and they said, What was it like? And I stopped and thought for a minute, and I thought, I said to him, Imagine you're on a, you're a, a pilot mm -hmm. and you go to bed at night thinking you're going to be flying to Hawaii and the next morning you wake up and realise that you're actually flying into a cyclone. That was kind of what it mm -hmm. felt like. You know, you had you had no idea what to do. You just had to just be real, um, be honest with your audience, and just let the thing evolve. It was. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I actually get quite emotional talking about it twenty mm -hmm. years later. What were your feelings at the time, buddy? Because you had to carry that breakfast show with uh, with uh, Penny and I, and geez, uh, I, I I still can't forget the images walking into the studio with burnt bodies and people falling out of the windows and blood everywhere and the dust. Uh, it was it, it it stays with you forever, doesn't it? It does. But I think you know, you and I, and I guess all people who work professionally as broadcasters, you, <clears throat> you have a switch where. From one side, you go from the person who you really are to the person who you project on the radio. Mm. So I think you sort of go, <clears throat> you go to that person, and uh, on one side you're trying to process it, but on the other side you actually have to be professional and and, and real and just give everybody information that they really are hungry for at that time. Grant, what about 
we experienced a, a range of emotions throughout that three or four hours uh, that morning, didn't we? As oh, God, it was a roller coaster, wasn't it? I mean, mm. it, and and it was like there was just no, <laughs> there was just no good news. Everything seemed to get more and more horrendous and more and more frightening. And you know, I, I came out of that at the end of that of, of that program, and I was emotionally numb. I yeah. was physically drained. It was like somebody had sucked all the juice out of me, and. Mm. All I wanted to do was get home and be with the ones that I loved. It was that it had that sense of sort of profundity about it. It was it was quite bizarre. You know, because when we got in there, we, we saw the first plane obviously slam into the North Tower, and then like fifteen twenty minutes later, we were still covering the first tower being um, slammed into. Then the second plane slammed into the se- South Tower. And you know, you, whilst you try to process one thing, something else is occurring, and it's like layer upon layer upon layer of disbelief and it's like how do you actually filter all of that through as a human being yeah. while still fulfilling your obligations and responsibilities yeah. as somebody who's a broadcaster to actually get that information across without it completely ripping your guts apart it was mm. it, you know it was really really tough mm. but you know it was one of those things where you just do it you yeah. know you've got no yeah. choice you've no. got no choice you've just got to get in there and hang tough and do it and at the end of it just you know walk away and debrief I mean, I think it was probably three to four weeks before I could actually sit down and listen back to that entire yeah, program because yeah. I was just so emotionally shattered by it. We were absolutely, yeah, we were ripped apart. Uh, mate, talking to radio great Grant Cameron, uh, just uh, discussing the 20th uh, year anniversary of uh, September 11 today. Mate, September 11, the events brought out the both in the worst and the best of people, do you think, buddy? Look, I think it's had a real profound effect. I think in hindsight we realise how much it's changed us. But, yeah, you're right. I think, you know, I think one of the most important and powerful things we did that morning was, was the decision we made. I think it was probably around 7 or 7.30 when the news was on and we sat around and we talked and we said, you know, let's just open the phones here and give people a chance to try and mm, process this yeah. because it was really important because we were having trouble doing it ourselves. Mm. And I think that's one of the... The thing I love about radio the most is that whilst TV can give you the drama of the images... What radio gives you is the opportunity to develop that intimate relationship with the person who's listening to the radio. And so by opening up the phones, what we actually did was we had that, I guess, that powerful human connection with our audience that, yeah. that, that television just never gives you. And sure, sure, they've got the dramatic pictures, but I think that was one of the most powerful things we did. And that's why I love radio, because it gives you that moment of intimacy that nothing else gives you. Mm. Oh, you were brilliant that morning. It was a pleasure to just be alongside you as a, a young whippersnapper trying to learn his it, trade in the radio industry and watching you uh, lead us beautifully uh, in what was a horrendous morning in terms of the world. So, um, mate, it's great to catch up, and uh, we really appreciate your time, buddy. And before I let you go, you're still making your bread? I still am. But it's one thing I actually want to say, one observation I, I, I've made, and I haven't said this to you before, Andrew, but I think one of the things that I was really aware of at the end of it was that people really got to know the real you that morning. I mean, you know, as I said, you know, we put a persona on when we go on air because that's how we protect ourselves from from the real world. But because there was no opportunity to do that, I actually think they got a chance to see the real and know the real you. Who, You know, for me, it's the guy who take a bullet for his family and the guy who used to sneak off, you know, without fanfare and without publicity to go visit sick kids in the hospital. And I think... For me, looking back on that, that was that was a really significant part of your evolution as a broadcaster. But I think more than anything else, I think it was a really significant part of the evolution of our breakfast program. And you know, I think that's a that's that's a that's a, a memory that I kind of continually hold about how that day you just went boom and you just blossomed into a real human being. It was fantastic to watch. No, oh, you're a beautiful man. Can't wait to see you back in Adelaide with uh, your lovely wife uh, Anne, who I call mother. And uh, great to chat, mate. And uh, now you Port Adelaide. Are you giving them a chance tonight? Absolutely. Oh. <laughs> okay, although I'd like it, although I'd like it to start about two or three hours before Melbourne in the grand final. <laughs> <laughs> Great to chat, mate, and thank you for sharing you your, your beautiful thoughts. And uh, take care, my friend, and we'll speak again. Lovely, buddy. See ya. There he is, the great Grant Cameron. Now, get down to the district from 1.30 today. We'll be live, and we've got the last port prelim tickets in Adelaide. Absolutely. Absolutely. That was a big... 
big interview there with Grant Cameron. Mm. Um, what very a emotional. What a man. And, mm. and I think he even summed it up there with you, Jars. He, he was very complimentary and um, I guess it gave everyone in Adelaide a bit of a, a taste of, of you and what you oh, bring. Look, so, anyway. It was a, yeah, he, a it big was a, day. Oh, it was oh, a look, huge day. In 20 years, I can't believe it. it. Yeah, absolutely. It was horrendous and it's changed our world forever. It has. Triple M's Dead Set Legends are serious about sport. Makita are serious about outdoor tools. Roll the outdoors with Makita.